Hey YouTube, this is The Art of Prepping. This is part two of my knife collection, uh, at least part of it. And uh, this is going to be about fixed blades. And once again, just like part one with my folding blades, uh, this is just a small representation of what I have. Uh, once again, most of my stuff is in kits in uh, different uh, pack systems and uh, vehicles and other locations. So uh, this is just what's readily available at this particular location that I'm at today. And so uh, I'll just begin and I'll just go through this. Uh, uh, there's not a lot of things here, but uh, enough to do a small video. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. The first knives are going to be the uh, Smith & Wesson HRT, which stands for a Hostage Rescue Team Knives. Um, I don't really know if these are actually used by SWAT or hostage rescue teams or police. I kind of doubt it. Uh, these are just a type of uh, mid to larger size boot knife. And uh, the, these are particular model number SWHRT3. And uh, there's apparently different models and stuff out there. Uh, here's the sheath. I put just a little bit of tether cord on this one. It has a, uh, a belt or a boot clip. And uh, this is the one I took uh, off the clip. It's removable. Uh, so you could tether it to a pack. Uh, so basically, they're just kind of like a rubber, very hard rubberized, uh, overmoded handle. And uh, I don't know, you know, it's uh, it's definitely, uh, you know, it's it's sharp on both sides or it's sharpened. Uh, but it's 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 really not that sharp at all to the to the touch. I mean, you can definitely sharpen it up. I have done a little bit more to it, but just because of the bevel grind, it makes it really hard to really sharpen. So. Uh, so that's my Smith & Wesson HRT. The next knives are going to be more of a, of a smaller to mid-sized camp knives. Uh, or just even general purpose, uh, basic compact survival knives at, at the most. Uh, you could probably press these into that type of purpose. Uh, the first one here, and, and the other two are actually modeled after this, uh, is the Gerber Metolius. Uh, I have a lot of oil on this one, but uh, this is the D2 model, uh, D2 steel. And this was a limited edition. Uh, they had, like, I think, at least two other blade steels, uh, but this has been discontinued, unfortunately. It's a very nice knife. And so the Gerber Metolius, it comes with this um, uh, sheath, or at least it used to be able to get this sheath. It's a, it's a fairly okay sheath. It's just kind of a, it's, it's a branded Gerber leather sheath, but uh, nothing really to write home about. Um, these two here kind of are the replicas or copies of that since these are not made anymore. And so Maxim picked up the ball, uh, close to the time period before, right before they discontinued them and they made their own variant. And as you can see here, it's a, it's a larger variant, uh, than the actual original Gerber Metolius. Now, you know, Maxim doesn't call these, you know, you know, the, uh, Metolius, but they, they have their own, uh, variants. Um, uh, they have some model numbers, which I don't remember. They also make a different variation, just like the Metolius has a gut hook one. Uh, they have one here in the Maxim. And these are really comfortable. I'm not going to kid you. They have some nice ridges and uh, just like, uh, you know, this one here uh, and even the original. Uh, they have some really nice, of course, this fits your hand a lot better. Uh, it's, it's actually the perfect size, the Gerber. These, these ones right here, the replica ones, are just a little large, but, you know, it's whatever you want. Uh, the Maxim uh, uses probably uh, crap steel. Let's just be honest. And uh, so, you know, you're probably talking about 420J2, some kind of surgical stainless, some kind of really low-end stainless steel versus the D2, which is a tool steel. It's just pretty freaking uh, ridiculously good. Uh, very high carbon content. And you can see these Maxims have these cheesy little, uh, uh, this one's some kind of a nylon or at, at best, maybe it's a polyester blend nylon or something and uh, this one is another one just a crappy little sheath um, but yet you know they were only a few bucks each so uh, you kind of get what you want uh, or at least get what you pay for I should say and so uh, just kind of be mindful when you buy off knockoffs or if there's a knife that you get and it's only like 10 to 15 dollars uh, there's a reason why uh, mainly because of the steel and secondly maybe the design isn't really optimum and thirdly uh, uh, maybe it doesn't have a very good track record or history and maybe it's made by a company that doesn't produce a lot of consistent quality so just something to kind of look at and uh, we'll jump to the next knife Okay, so this one's your Baco. Uh, this is going to be made in Sweden uh, by Mora Knives. Uh, this Baco is in model number 2444. And here's some of the barcodes, unless you, if you need that number. 
It has this integrated clip on here and it's just kind of a friction fit sheath. It's a nice simple sheath with a drainage hole on the bottom. Uh, this uses the, uh, it's called a Scandinavian grind. And so it has a nice bevel, high bevel on there. And uh, this is uh, this is one of the stainless steel versions. And um, use a Scandinavian uh, steel. It's, a, it's called a Sandvik steel. And it has a rubber overmoded plastic handle, which is super comfortable. Uh, these only go for less than $10. I think I was able to pick up a, uh, a small set of these since I have these in almost every kit and pack because they only weigh a few ounces. I, I was actually, because just because I probably bought the volume of them I did, I got them for around $7 each. And this is just within the last few months. Seriously, I, I got some more of them on Amazon. So, you know, there's really no excuses of not being able to get some of these uh, at cheapy, cheapy prices. Right here is a little thumb push off. Uh, and uh, basically it just slides in and has a little click to it and uh, no shake, no rattle. I mean, unbelievable for just around seven to eight dollars. Uh, you can get them in different colors too. Or if you want the actual Mora brand, which still is the same company, they just have a little bit of a different design, but they still make the same, you know, the, the knives. They can be anywhere from uh, eight to fifteen dollars, depending on if you want carbon steel, you know, or stainless steel or uh, colors or thicknesses of blades. They got the heavy duty versions and so forth. So, uh, this is my Baco. Anybody in the knife world that's been in the world for a while, uh, you definitely have heard of Blackie Collins. He's done a lot of things. Unfortunately, he passed away uh, a few years ago. Um, so, uh, I do have some of his knives and, and basically, uh, he's just a very innovative person. This is going to be a Skinner knife. Uh, at first glance, you'd be like, oh, is that a defensive push dagger? I mean, I guess you could if you needed to for self-defense, but this is really for a large game, uh, large, uh, you know, like deer, uh, and maybe like, uh, other things. So basically you, uh, palm it and get this very sharp. It's very razor sharp. You got to be very careful with this. And it also has, uh, so this can do, um, you know, uh, you know, kind of, uh, push, um, uh, forward cuts. Uh, you can also take your hand and, uh, and move it around and uh, like this and do uh, you know different types of push cuts down uh, or you can even you know grab it again and do draw cuts uh, this gut hook here uh, can also be used in, in reverse uh, to actually cut hide open as well if you don't want to use the main blade you can just do whatever versatile way you want to use it these little thumb serrations right here on the top portion is for uh, extra grip so if you want to do a push cut you can actually grab it like this as well so it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So that's my Blackie Collins uh, Skinner. Uh, it is a 440 stainless steel. So it's nothing high end at all. You know, it says um, manufactured in China, uh, national headquarters in the USA. So I think they're based out of like, uh, I don't remember in particular, but I think it's somewhere in, in Texas, if I'm correct on that. I'm not for sure about that. But uh, so this is just a little cheesy little sheath, but it, it, it works. You know, it's not like the greatest it has a little button closure. Uh, once again, that's the Blackie Collins. Speaking of Blackie Collins, I went ahead and just pulled these out here. Uh, these are some more Marco uh, uh, exclusive designs by Blackie Collins. And these, this was part of his Neck Lance series. And this one is his Hunter, Drop Point Hunter. Uh, it's just, of course, sharpened on one edge. And of course, it has this, um, I guess it's some kind of glass reinforced nylon handle. It's very small, uh, as you can see, very narrow. Uh, of course, this is really more of a neck knife. They also have a double-edged dagger variations and uh, have one here and here. I put some different paracord on this one just to kind of give it a little more girth uh, to get a good grip. And uh, I also have um, the sheaths. I put a ranger band on this one, uh, wrapped this sheath here. Uh, you can see the neck cord on them. Uh, this one, I use some suede leather. So you can kind of customize them. Um, I do actually have a lot more of the variants. In fact, I have, like I think, all, all seven variants. I have the uh, River Rescue Raft, um, you know, uh, one-sided, fully serrated, which are very large serrations. I also have other different variations, some of them in the black blades. Uh, I don't have them right here in this location, so I don't have them to show you, but you can look them up online and see all the, all the variations. So I have all those as a set, but they're, they're really nice. I mean, they're not like high-end steel. Uh, I would have said that they're probably, I can't remember, but, uh, it's a deeper, you know, I'm sorry, a decent tempered 440. 
but uh, they have this nice satin finish to them. I've never had any rust problems with them, or uh, they weigh almost nothing. You know, with this and the sheet together, I think it's around like two, two and a half ounces, something like that. So if you're looking for a neck knife, it's not too bad. Uh, the retention in the sheath isn't like totally amazing, but I've never had one like fall out on me. So that's uh, my Blackie Collins uh, Myrco Neck Lance. The next two knives will be Schrade knives. These are like the uh, more modern in the last couple of years. They've come out with this one. I think this one's just within the last year. This is the SEHF 24. And uh, it's a nice uh, fixed blade made out of... Um, uh, here is the day right here, SHF 24. Uh, this is um, HCR 13 MOV. HCR 13 MOV with a Kydex sheath, uh, if, if that's correct for my memory. Holds, uh, you know, my hand very well. I get a good purchase. It's a little thin, has G10 uh, sculpted uh, uh, handle um, scales. Uh, this one has been sharpened to a ridiculous sharpness, uh, maybe a little too sharp. Uh, but you can choke up on it with this ramp or it has a very unique, uh, I guess this is a clip point. Uh, I'm not for sure, but it's a modified clip point. Uh, but uh, it's, it's pretty decent. And uh, I'll just slide it in this sheath here and um, it clicks in really well. And the way that you can position it in different ways, uh, this is like be tucked into um, uh, the back of my belt at about the, uh, you know, I guess you would say it's... Um, the five o'clock position and you can put your belt through and compress it against your body and so you can have a knife kind of in the small uh, just to the right of the small of your back so that's one of them and uh, here is another charade uh, this is the SEHF uh, 36 and so this has the button closure here and it just slides right on out as a black blade uh, this is of course going to be a 1095 blade uh, so you have to kind of watch a little bit it can rust real quick but mine hasn't had any problems the the TPE, which I think is some kind of textured uh, rubber uh, overmoded plastic uh, grips, they do really well. It has a nice texture, and uh, it's a pretty good size knife. It's a nice bushcraft knife. I'll move the sheath out of the way for better contrast, and you can see it's pretty good. You can choke up on it for finer whittling and task around the campground or for survival applications. You can definitely use this since it's a full tang. Pretty thick but and stout, which is good. It has a little bit of weight to it, but it's not bad. Uh, you can definitely do batoning with this. Uh, it's not humongous, but you could definitely baton decent sized pieces of wood. And um, and so uh, this is a, a highly recommended item here. The sheath is okay, actually. It's not too bad. It's a little cheesy. It has Velcro here to go around your belt. Not the biggest fan of that. It does come with a sharpener and a ferrule rod inside a pouch uh, and a leg strap. So, I mean, overall, it's, it's a pretty good little set. Uh, I think I got these for uh, like around $35, this particular one. Uh, you know, at the beginning of the year here in 2016. So uh, let's talk about Gerber. Uh, the next two knives will be Gerbers. Uh, this first one, I believe, is called the Ghost Strike. And uh, this is just kind of one of my self-defense fixed blades. I don't carry it a lot, uh, but it's pretty lightweight and pretty small. Uh, pretty, pretty small. Very sharp. Um, has a decent sheath. It has some metal rollers in there to locks in. See right here, there's these uh, two indentations on the Ricasso area. Uh, they lock in. The only problem is that that little roller bar can rub against the blade. And after, you know, a few dozen, uh, you know, unsheathing of, from the sheath, it can start to dull the blade. Now, this one's still really, really sharp, but I have noticed it kind of uh, is a little bit duller than when I got it. Of course, I don't use this very much. <clears throat> you can also see right here where the... Uh, uh, these tabs, these belt tabs, you can adjust them anywhere you want. So you can have it so that it's not just um, like this, which is horizontal carry, uh, which could be in the small of the back or in the front. But you can also put them uh, so it's vertical. Uh, so you could take these wings or these tabs and put them on each side. And, and depending on how high or low you want the sheath in your body, uh, you can do that. So let's look at the next Gerber. I do have a video on this one as well. Both of these have their own videos. They're both made in the USA. I should specify as well. So this one is the Gerber Prodigy. The Gerber Prodigy, I really like this a lot. Um, it would be just a little bit better if it wasn't serrated, but, you know, it probably isn't the worst thing in the world. Uh, this is a nice, um, I don't want to say small because it's not, uh, and I don't know if I see, can even say it's a mid-size knife, but compared to many other knives, this is a mid-size. Uh, it has a nice... Uh, Rubber over-molded grip, 
Uh, some people say it's a little too thin. It does have a little bit of a palm swell. Uh, but uh, this really is designed just like a lot of their infantry knives or the LMF series as well, which is kind of like a small brother to. Uh, they're meant really to have gloves on. And people don't understand that. The Gerber really kind of counts on you pretty much having some kind of tactical gloves. So uh, even that, even, even then though, uh, I can still do okay with it. It's not that bad. It has a nice metal palmer, pommel or skull crusher, if you will. It has a little bit of a sweep here to kind of lock your hands in and uh, a little bit of a guard here. Uh, this is the only problem though. Uh, if you're talking about wanting to use it for like bushcraft or some kind of carving, it kind of gets in the way a little bit. So that's why it's not like a general purpose, uh, what I would consider bushcraft knife, but for survival, it's just fine because you can still get your thumb up and over that uh, to do push cuts and draw cuts and, and if you had to do some whittling if you had to. So this is a nice knife. Uh, you can typically get these around $40 to $45 all day on Amazon and other places. The sheath is really good quality too. It's almost overkill on the retentions. There's two uh, snaps that really hold tight. Also, there's a, a, a friction snap right here in the actual uh, uh, molded sheath portion right here. So there's really three contact points for the knife to be in. And uh, it has a molly compatible lashing there and a leg a strap. And so really this is probably for maximum retention uh, for paratroopers uh, or uh, anybody is doing crazy activities that you could be inverted upside down uh, or you just need uh, maximum retention and not speed. Uh, for a soldier's knife, this may not be the best option uh, just because it's a little bit more uh, slow to get access to uh, just because of all these systems here. Not that you'd have to have them all deployed, but as you will see though, once you have it in there, it does have a nice snap. Uh, these straps still get in the way, even if they're not being used. So you could either cut them off or uh, maybe find a way to restrain them by pulling them back and, and maybe figuring out a way to retain these straps. But I don't know. Uh, this just sometimes goes in one of my packs. Right now, it's it's just a floating knife. I have found other knives to do you know all the tasks that I had before. And so right now, I don't have a purpose for this. Uh, not to say it's not good or nothing. I'm not, uh, I have no regrets getting this. Uh, in fact, this was one of the, um, one of the, uh, the very few that they were made in the Sandvik steel. Uh, they were made, I believe in the, um, the 420 HC and there might've been even a third blade steel. I'm not for sure about that, but I'm not an expert on this particular knife. Uh, but I did get the Sandvik on this one, which was actually one of the more harder to find or more rare. And it's probably the, the best quality of the stainless steels. Uh, that was made in this particular model uh, that Gerber made with the, of the Prodigy. So let's go ahead and move into um, uh, one of these uh, these knives that I have a whole bunch of colorations and formats. This is just one representation of uh, of the, what I have, and this is the uh, of a series actually. It's called the uh, the Glock uh, uh, Trench Knife uh, model number eighty one, and you'll see right here it says made in Austria, uh, and it says Glock uh, eighty one. And there's nothing on the uh, on the rear side. This one's really dirty. I added, uh, let's just say I was digging in the dirt quite a bit. And uh, it uses spring steel, the same kind of steel that you would find like on the suspension of a vehicle. Very, very rough, very, very giving steel. But you can sharpen this thing as it is. It's very sharp. And this particular model has the saw blade on the, on the actual spine here. It's very, very sharp as well. Uh, you can get them without it and uh, you can get it with it. I like them with it. Uh, but to do bushcraft knives or any kind of push cuts, it doesn't really lend to that because you can cut your thumb. Uh, so it might be good actually to have several variants of these. I have different colors as well. The sheath is awesome. Very simple. It has this built-in uh, pocket, well, it's not pocket clip, but um, it's a, um, you know, a built-in sheath system with a, uh, uh, a belt holder here or uh, a belt loop. And, uh, you know, pretty much it, uh, it's the most uh, streamlined, minimized system that I can imagine and uh, does very well, in fact. Um, but in terms of what I've done is I put a, a ferroserum rod and uh, also a striker there and some different paracord, two different types of color of paracord. It does have a drainage hole there. And uh, so I'll just show you what it looks like. It's very minimal. It does have a click. A nice positive click. It doesn't have any rattle. It's ridiculous how nice this is. Uh, you can get these super cheap. I think $25 a few years ago. I got some of these and I uh, don't regret it at all. It's kind of a large knife, but it is what it is. Let's look at two keychain knives and we'll finish it off with a uh, Ontario knife. So uh, this is one of my 
uh, keychain knives that I convert over into a neck knife. And uh, this is made uh, by uh, Code Steel. And uh, let me just get this out. It's very, very sharp. You have to be very careful. I put some, uh, some actual uh, paracord wrap on this sheath just to kind of give it a little flavor. That's some uh, the woodland camo there. And uh, over here we have this thing called the Super Edge made by Code Steel. Uh, full serrations with, with the exceptions of the very tip there. It has just a little bit of a fine edge. Uh, very sharp, very good little knife. These are not that expensive, like $12 to $15, and um, it's pretty good. Uh, another uh, knife, a little mini fixed blade, one of my smallest as well, is going to be this m -Tech. Uh This is the m -Tech here. Uh, it, it was a little bit difficult to sharpen, but I do have it pretty, pretty, almost to the point of razor sharpness. Uh, it uses 440 stainless steel. Uh, model number MT-20-30. And uh, this is made in China, but it's actually like a little G10, like a tan G10 scale. And uh, it's so small, I can barely get three fingers at most. But uh, just, you know, for some, doing small task. So we'll just slide that in there. And you can see this is a small, I don't know if this is Kydex. It could be, but it kind of feels like maybe a little bit more of a thermoplastic of some sort. I put this paracord over here just to give it a little bit of cordage uh, and also make it look kind of cool. So those are some like smaller fixed blades. And lastly, we'll just kind of do a finale here of my love-hate relationship, which I have a couple videos on, of my Ontario. <clears throat> and uh, this particular one is the, um, the SK5, which just stands for survival knife with a five inch blade, SK5 uh, Nori. And uh, it's also known as the Blackbird Nori since it's the black, um, version of this SK5. It has one heck of a snap here, people. Uh, let me just get this. Yeah, there we go. She whiz. It's a lot easier with two hands, but you may recognize that the sheath looks a little different. I took off the pouch in the front that I put on, and um, and so now it's just, it's just how it came. Very slender. They have different color variations. I think there's like one that's not like a coyote brown or something. And I, I did eventually get this sharpened. Uh, I did it myself, and it is actually kind of wicked sharp now. So I have to be careful, but for a long time, you know, since almost ever since I've had it, it's been dull as crap. And so now I've got it really sharp. It does a little beat up. That's because I've used it uh, to baton and stuff and tried it out and there's no chipping or nothing. It's a very good steel, 154 CM, uh, pretty good. Not like the best ever in history of man, but uh, good enough, good enough to uh, be cool. Uh, it has the, um, uh, the canvas micarta scales. Uh, this is a pretty high quality knife. I'm not saying it's the best. I'm not so even sure if I would even recommend it just because the bevel uh, is so jacked up and they still make them jacked up that they haven't fixed that from uh, all the reports that I've even gotten is, is, you know, recent as a couple of days ago. I've had some uh, uh, subscribers say how jacked up they still are. So I can't recommend them. So these are just some of my fixed blades. Hopefully this was entertaining. Uh, FSO, who requested these videos, uh, hope you enjoyed this, my friend. Um, I think you're out there in Australia. I, I just, man, I don't know if you're allowed to have some of these. Hopefully you are. I don't really know what all your knife laws are. I know a lot of the folding blades, there's definitely some limitations. Um, I have a few friends in Australia, and uh, the knives that I sent them were confiscated. So I don't really have a lot of uh, good good feelings about your government, but I can tell you though that um, you know in America here uh, we don't have uh, a lot of problems with knives. There's certainly some places, the larger cities, where I have a lot of restrictions, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I don't live there because I don't want to live in a communist state. But uh, here's some of my knives, all laid out just really kind of quickly, and uh, hopefully this was fun and interesting. Uh, if you have any comments or anything you want me to clarify further, uh, I do have other knives, obviously, but this is just kind of to highlight what I have um, in a reasonable time frame since we're already uh, almost 24 minutes in. So thanks again for all your support, and I'll catch you real soon.